We finished our restaurant search application, but it's too slow. To find all the Thai restaurants and list all of their similar restaurants doesn't happen instantly. In fact, it takes about 0.7 seconds. And things are even worse if we look at cafes. Since there are more cafes, it now takes 1.7 seconds in order to list all of the results. Why is it so slow? We could go through and time each part, or we could just think about what's happening in our program. We go through each restaurant to see if it matches the query. That's linear time. For each restaurant, we call similar on every other restaurant. That's also linear time. And what about computing the similarity itself? Here we go through every reviewer for restaurant R and check if that's a reviewer for restaurant S. And how does it do that check? Well, it goes through every reviewer in restaurant S to see if it's X. So this operation is actually quadratic time. It's comparing all pairs of a reviewer in R and a reviewer in S to see if they're the same. I think that's what's slow. Which gives rise to the question, could we figure out the number of users that reviewed both R and S in just linear time? Indeed we could. Here's the trick. Instead of just keeping a list of reviewers for each restaurant, we'll keep a sorted list of reviewers. And then we'll write down a linear time procedure that checks for the amount of overlap between two sorted lists. Given two sorted lists with no repeats, we want to return the number of elements that appear in both lists. Let's start with an example. If I have this sorted list and that sorted list, the way we'll find all of the elements they have in common is to pass through both of them together, starting at the beginning of each. If one of these elements is smaller than the other, we know it doesn't appear in the other one because it's smaller than this, and this is smaller than everything here, so one must not appear anywhere in this list. Therefore, I can advance in the second list because one is smaller than three. Three and three are the same, so I found an element that appears in both, and I can advance both of these positions. Four is smaller than five, so it's also smaller than seven and eight, meaning it doesn't appear anywhere in the other list, so we can discard it and move on. Likewise, five doesn't appear in six, seven, nine, ten, because it's smaller than six and everything after six, so we can move on. Six is smaller than seven, and now we found another pair. So we remember that we found a second element that appears in both, and we advance both. Eight is smaller than nine, which means eight doesn't appear anywhere in the first list, and now I've reached the end of the second list, which means I'm not going to find any more elements that appear in both. Now that you have a picture, try to implement that procedure. I recommend that you pause, and I'll go over the answer in three, two, one. We'll use i to index into list s, and j to index into list t. And we'll keep going as long as i is less than the length of s, and j is less than the length of t. If I've found an element that appears in both, then I increment the count and move forward in both s and t. If the element I'm considering in list S is smaller than the element in list T, then I know it doesn't appear in list T anywhere, and so I can move forward in S. Otherwise, I move forward in T. Let's see if it speeds things up. It takes one and a half seconds to list out all the cafes and their similar restaurants. But what if we replace reviewed both with a new implementation? Here's the modular way to do it. We should define the overlap between two sorted lists generically for any two lists, whether they're lists of reviewers or lists of something else. 
and here's the code from the slide. And then reviewed both should call fast overlap on the particular lists that are needed in order to compute reviewer overlap. Instead of one and a half seconds, now it takes only 0.7 seconds. So we've made it twice as fast, at least for that one run. And what about Thai food? Is that faster than 0.7 seconds? Yes, it is. Now it only takes half a second. And that means that our program is responsive enough to make it interactive. We can do that by saying forever search for whatever the user types in and print out the results. In order to indicate that it's time to type something, let's put a little prompt there. So I've started my restaurant search engine and I can look for Thai food or I can look for a cafe or I can look for coffee and learn all about Berkeley's restaurants that way.